because I'm a truth teller and my job here is not to come and prevaricate or go around in circles, I will confidently say, and as someone who supported Ruto, that the president doesn't care. Um, it's, it's an unfortunate type of politics that we are practicing in this country. By the way, believe in his legitimacy as the president. To be honest, uh, not really. I mean, because it's, it's difficult to defeat Raila, by the way, mathematically. It's difficult to... Raila has his own issues, but arithmetically, it's very difficult to do defeat Raila Odinga. That's just a fact. William Ruto is a bomb that was assembled by the Moy family, mm. polished by the Odinga family, mm. deployed by the Kenyatta family. Mm. How are you going to stop this bomb? I feel that they have failed flat. Everything. Ah, completely. Nothing. You're not seeing anything. I don't say this is useless. They have failed flat. Useless. Bure kabisa. Hello there and welcome to Jadel Kabira Unfiltered here <coughs> on Harman Manure's YouTube channel. My name is Jadel Kabira. Excited to be here to have these conversations on politics and governance. My guest today is a political analyst, commentator, strategist and marketer, communications guru, he says. Uh, I'm glad to have you here, Benji. How are you doing today? Asante Sana, generally, I'm um, good. Happy to be here. You know, these conversations we are having, I hope you will be unfiltered. I hope you will be truthful. I hope you will be Always. the Benji dollar I know. A truthful man. A <laughs> conversation for today starts from a sad point. You see what is happening in, in Athi River, those buildings that are being destroyed, people evicted, families going home, not going even home because they can have nowhere to go. Raila Odinga heads there yesterday, he's told no entry. We have to finish what we are doing today. was accused of being silent, but he came out yesterday saying this is not right. We have to do something about it. First of all, you look at that at the River case, people are thinking, am I even safe where I am? Should we blame those people that built their houses without doing thorough research? Or should we say, hey, Ruto, you said we'll have a win-win situation when you take over office. Why are you doing this now? Um, and obviously, inhumane sad picture not the first time we saw very serious evictions um in the cold season in the rain under president uhuru's term you just wonder what beef the government has with the people of kenya because do we even have a legitimate government in place kenyans get up every morning to work very hard they pay housing levy they pay vat they pay income tax they pay NSSF, they pay NHIF, they do fundraisers to educate their children. Once they do their fundraisers and they sell property, cows, land, etc., a governor takes that money, sends the kids to Finland, they are not able to be admitted to school, they are on drugs, they are being deported back, they are committing suicide. After, again, the Kenyan people have done their part in the deal. Um, a Kenyan goes, identifies a parcel of land in Athi River, does some due diligence, pays a developer, pours cement, mm. pays a contractor, moves into the property, spending 10 million, 11 million, mm. 20 million. Mm. The government wakes up one morning after the president has said that they'll look into it mm. and demolishes. So, um, what kind of a government is that? What kind of vindictiveness? Mm. What kind of vengeance does the government have against the people? And the saddest part about this, Kabiru, as well, is you dig deeper and you realize behind these kinds of scams are sitting members of parliament, mm. former members of parliament, current governors, former governors. Again, I ask on this show, what beef? does the government have with the people? Do you think it's really a case of the government versus the people, not the government doing the right thing? Because you look at this area of land, it belongs to uh, that, uh, that cement company, and you think, well, these people should have done due diligence. And that's where the government would say, this is not on us. And also, before you answer me on that, is there a possibility of a win-win situation when it comes to evicting or dealing with this menace? Why that argument doesn't wash, Kabiru, is simply because where was the government when the, the buyers were building? You see, a house like this where we are now, this house cannot be built in 10 days. 
These construction projects take years even. At shortest six months to two years. Because these are big projects, they're expensive. So suffice to say that on this Portland land, mm. um, the developers had been there five years, oh. seven years, eight years, ten years. So the same government that has issued titles, because I'm sure those guys have titles, share certificates, etc., is the same government condemning, number one. Number two, leadership dictates, and that's why we do shows like this. Mm. Leadership dictates to Kabiru that, okay, we have a problem. We have a problem. It's a painful problem. Mm. Uh, the people that are, are victims in this problem are human beings. Mm. They are Kenyans. They are taxpayers. So we flag the problem, and then we say, you know, we have to, we have to bomb more. Mm. We have to bring these houses down because we found there's a problem. Mm. What we can therefore do is give a 90-day moratorium, you know, to say, this has to come down. So please, you have 90 days to find somewhere to live. You can even go a step further and say, the government will go and find a kitty where it can try to find a halfway solution mm -hmm. because the government also collected t t tax duty, stamp duty, etc. on these transactions. Yeah. Um, and we can maybe pay something, like maybe a small apartment rent uh, for six months as the victims figure out what to do, as they figure out legal process, etc. Mm -hmm. In other words, Kabir, what I'm talking about here is a more futuristic, more sustainable, mm -hmm. more humane, uh, compassionate kind of government. And we it's, it's not a government that says, uh, you have paid 12 million, you are foolish, and I'm going to punish you. So I'm giving a different yeah. avenue, a different approach, where you don't then have... I mean, you looked at the news reports yesterday, you've got families that spent the night the day before, na wakabumulewa jana, and jana jioni, they had nowhere to go. I mean, and they wakona watoto, they have got school-going children, some have got infants. How, how is that fair? Uh, we go back to what you're saying, what beef does the government have with the people? With the people. And, and we look at this tough economic times that we're living in right now, cost of petrol, retailing at 217 shillings, diesel 205, Kerosene 205, uh, and you, you ask yourself, does the president really care about the people? And that is where I'm going next, because people, uh, I've seen some vox pops on the streets, and people are saying, look, he's increasing, you know, the cost of living, and then he's flying out to other countries. Right now, he's in China. Do you believe the president doesn't really care? Is that the state we are in? Um, yeah, because, because I'm a truth teller, and my job here is not to come and prevaricate or go around in circles. I will confidently say, and as someone who supported Ruto, that the president doesn't care. Um, it's, it's an unfortunate type of politics that we are practicing in this country. Um, yes, you guys had put out yesterday that I'll be on air today. So mm. everywhere I went last evening, um, yesterday afternoon, I've met at least almost 10 different people that have said, I know you're going to go and talk about you know, issues tomorrow. Um, I would like you to consider that we are, in a sense, we have a good side to this society, Gabiro, mm -hmm. but we are also a rotten society. And sometimes our leaders are a reflection of ourselves. Um, Ruto is proving to be, and I hate to say this, but a dishonest leader. Mm. Yes, you didn't, absolutely. You, you didn't see that while you were campaigning together with him in 2022? <laughs> No, you see, what I did, and I, I, you're right, I, a lot of people um, corrected me or attempted to correct me and say, you know, Benji, you are uh, a reformist, you are an activist of note, you are a smart guy, how can you support this guy? And I've had that argument even within my own family, where I come from, because we all come from places. And mm -hmm. people say, how can you support Ruto? But what I did is I gave the president the benefit of the doubt, but he also has abused that goodwill. And I'm not alone. If you looked at those Vox, Vox Pops you were talking about yesterday, mm. it was very interesting to me that the Vox Pops didn't talk about Uhuru. Mm. And these are just um, regular Wanainchi mm. coming from Jengo, coming from Mamamboga, etc. Mm. And they talked about Kenya is in such a bad place that if only we could resurrect Moi, Natulifikiria Moi Nimbaya, all right? I'm just quoting verbatim. Mm. 
tulijaribu moyo tukifikiria tu anandi wako na uongozi hakuna tumejaribu ruto sasa tena sasa yeye ndio kuharibu zaidi afadhali moyo moyo sasa hata tuone ni vitu gani yenye wanda tufanyie hapa hata afadhali moyo wafufue moyo asimame kwa nini afadhali hata moyo arudi ama kibaki hmm? je yeah, sisi tunaumia hmm? kila kitu iko juu sukari ikuwa chakula iko juu sana Hmm? Watoto kusomesha akiongeza leo kesha anaenda China akiongeza leo kesha anaenda America sasa tutajua ukweli kwa wapi sasa president afanye chenye anata tumemwachia uwezo wake hizi alituambia akipita kura kila kitu itaenda chini yeye mwenyewe ndiye alisema sio sisi na watu wakampigia kura sasa zile anapandisha vitu anapanda ndege anaenda China kukula chura na sisi huko nyuma tunapaki tunahangaika kama tungejua kama tungejua kama tungejua tulikuwa naambia vijana wacha tupikie huyu mzee kura huyu kijana kura tukiwacha tuki mzee kumbe tulikuwa tunajimbia kaburi i wish to can resurrect moi definitely kama tunaweza kurudisha kibaki that is a big indictment on the young leaders that we've had in the person of william ruto mm. and the person of uhuru kenyatta both former icc inductees because i think what these two young men did is they understood the psychology of kenyans that Kenyans usually side with the ad- underdog mm. that there was a bit of empathy towards them when they were in court mm. as ICC inductees they then weaponized and mobilized that to make it a political tool and a political weapon with which to garner power mm. once they got power in the case of Uhuru Ruto in a sense seems to be an extension of Uhuru Uhuru led this country on a platform of tantrums on a platform of pettiness on a platform of emotions and feelings mm. you know yes absolutely on 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 uru could have been one of the best presidents mm. on 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 a record of an unchecked unchecked corruption mm. you know and 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 just to imagine that his deputy could con- continue on the same path mm. because kabiru what happened is yes there was this false you know struggle in the jubilee government that pitted waziri fred matiangi kibicho and the entire what you call system mm. against the dp um and therefore that allowed him to appear to be an outsider and that then inevitably caused Raila Odinga to carry the incumbency mm. and all of because remember jubilee administration was a failed administration mm. when when the history books are written mm. and people like uh Haman Manyora are political scientists if they were to be honest with you and do mm. a proper cold calculated analysis of the last 10 years mm. the jubilee regime was a failure you can see, when you talk about the, the jubilee the, regime was a failure you look at the infrastructure failure. you look at the electricity connection no you cannot just look at the infrastructure without looking at the cost we are suffering the 217 fuel price per liter mm. because what ndi and the president are arguing mm. is that we have a financial crisis a financial crisis that this young man mm. that is producing and shooting us right now mm. and the young lady that they have to pay for in a country with no jobs in a country where interest rates are high mm. in a country where systems don't work in a country where president uhuru sold to us universal health care but hospitals have no painkillers okay mm. this is not a personal attack on anybody we must as young people especially mm. be very responsible and be very forthright if we're going to change this country if we're not interested in changing the country it's fine by the way i don't have to oppose ruto i could just for the long haul because i have many avenues i could just uh, be patient which i've been asked to be patient mm. and support the president and try to find something for myself as benji mm. but i have a young daughter in this country and i have many other young people in this country who if we continue on the path we are continuing mm. there's not going to be any country to speak of they're saying everything is bad like you look at the cost of crude oil look internationally that's why we are where we are you look at the cost of living globally let's not no. just look at kenya no. the way it is does this hold water that argument does not wash that argument is made by chirchir first of all the fact that the president even put together a cabinet that lacks credibility that tells you everything you need to know about his intention Mm-hmm. And he himself also came out just like Uhuru and said you know I call ministers I call CSs I call a PS 
and they have no clue what is happening in their ministry. That is his words, not mine. You can play that on the yeah, clip yeah, as well. Yeah. Okay, so that's the kind of people he has put in place. He has done a mini reshuffle, which to me was a half-baked reshuffle. Mm. And that's why I'm saying you cannot isolate the infrastructure that was blueprinted by President Kibaki, mm. that Uhuru found the blueprints and found an opportunity to do looting, mm. that then they have occasioned unbelievable borrowing on wrong terms, on mm. bad terms, uh, and catastrophic looting as well. As we are speaking now, the president is in China again for more borrowing. Mm. After he said that he is not going to borrow anymore, mm. that he's not going to spend like the previous regime spent, mm. a previous regime which was part of and which is really him. Now, wh wh why do you think this? So, this, what am I to do? Wh why do you think there is this sudden like 360 degree turn from, look, uh, we are talking about Uhuru being the person that destroyed this country, and now they are praising Uhuru when he was launching MV Uhuru in Kisumu. There's this, you know, eviction of people. They say there's going to be a win-win solution to this. Uh, you're talking about crude oil. There were the people castigating Uhuru's government, saying it's not international. Actually, uh, crude, crude oil is cheaper now. They are saying that it's not international. They were telling that Uhuru. Why is this 360 turn coming around? And it seems like they're actually agreeing with most of the things that Uhuru did in his uh, tenure. I think you actually meant a 180 turn because when you turn 360, you come exactly, you to exactly where yeah. you are. So 180 is where you go the exact opposite. Mm. But uh, where it is coming to is a realization that um, there's no competency, okay? A realization that the reality on the ground is that things are quite difficult. Mm. A hesitancy to do the right thing. A lack of will. I mean, if you look at, for example, the pronouncements of someone like David D, who's the chief economic advisor, you mm. know. So you spend all your activist time fighting Uhuru. You then come and work for his deputy. Um, you realize things are bad. And then you resort now to sending cryptic tweets all over. Mm. And saying such things in public like, oh, you know, giving up. Oh, you know, governments are wasteful. Yeah. We can't really do anything. We're just tri doing trisex. Mm. And these trisex might not even work. My point, Kabiru, is that this is complete hogwash. This will never fly. This will never change anything. Mm. Um, it's dishonest. And the worst part about this, because we have a country where 80% are under 35 or under 40. I mean, we have a country of young people. Mm. Young people that are growing up thinking, Politics doesn't work. Young people that are growing up thinking that government is about looting. Government is about deception. Uh, that leadership is about gimmickry. This is the tragedy of how William Ruto is proceeding. Mm. Is, you know, there are questions around even elections. There are questions around IABC. Mm. There are questions around uh, validity of the vote. Therefore, democracy itself is at risk. And then... When young people even give you an opportunity, because mm. many of them lined up and gave me the benefit of the doubt, mm. including myself, then you come out and do, I mean, how can you, in God's name, do worse than Uhuru? It <laughs> just doesn't make sense. Because yeah. Uhuru is such a sharp and fast, and what they're saying now mm. is, um, so what they're saying is that he needs a bit more time. This is what I'm hearing. Gashago has actually said we give them six I months. I think I saw that yesterday. Seeing the economical uh, policies mm. coming into. Uh, you know, I've actually met Gashago in person. Um, I'm supposed to have been doing some work for him. Um, but you see, you see how Gashagwa speaks. And I'm not Kikuyu, so I guess I'm not a shareholder. And you know what I did for you, Kabiri, today is I did something interesting, which I hope the camera will catch very well. Mm. Um, I decided today to carry the Constitution of Kenya. Oh. I actually didn't know before this morning that it's pocket friendly. Mm. So wh why do you have it with you today? You, you know, part of the problem, Kabiri, is... Can you imagine if more of us carried the constitution? Mm. And so, as we're talking about Gashaga, who is the DP, who is yeah. the number two, I just want to, I just want to shoot off because you see, I came on this show, not for drama or entertainment. Mm. I came on this show, and this is a good show, by the way. Yeah, thanks. And I'm happy to see young people doing mm. important things mm. and having the right conversations. Yes. I came on this show, Kabiro, because you see, as we're talking about the problems, we want to see how did we get here. Mm -hmm. What is the root cause of these problems? And how do we therefore diagnose solutions? So for instance, um, I like this constitution. We all agreed that this is a very good constitution that mm -hmm. we passed in 2010. I'm just going to shoot off for our viewers 
just a few choice articles in this constitution. Mm -hmm. Not my opinion, mm -hmm. not my opinion piece what in the newspaper. In? What is in the constitution? And then when I do that, because I can see you're a smart guy, mm -hmm. you'll be able to tell what is wrong. Okay? Okay. So, for instance, Article 10, quote, Article 10 one, the national values and principles of governance in this article bind all state organs, state officers, public officers, and all persons whenever any of them applies or interprets his constitution, that includes judiciary, and mm -hmm. NACS applies or interprets any law, C, makes or implements public policy decisions, mm -hmm. number two, the national values and principles of governance include Mm -hmm. A, 2A, yeah. patriotism, loving this country, okay. national unity, sharing and devolution of power, rule of law, democracy, and participation of the people. I cannot believe that that is actually spelled out sharing, in Article 10. Sharing and devolution, devolution of power. Yes, and, and national unity and patriotism. B, B human dignity, mm -hmm. equity, social justice, inclusiveness, Equality, human rights, non-discrimination, and protection of the marginalized. And lastly, C, before D, sustainable development. Mm. Good governance, integrity, transparency, and accountability. Mm. Now, this article alone, can you tell me Gashago is not in violation of that article? Can you tell me Moses Kuria is not in violation of this article? Not my interpretation mm. and not my opinion. You cannot build a country where, first of all, you trust the constitution. We only need to follow this constitution. That is Article 10. Mm. Let me just go a step further because the good thing with now new media is this is not unlike the days of TV where we, someone is watching us on television yeah. and the, the episode passes and it's done. Mm. This is YouTube where someone will pause mm. and check. Someone can scroll back. This is digital media. Yes. And this thing is going to be watched even by Kenyans in Germany and Qatar. Yeah. All right. Let me give you another article for instance. Let's go to Article 226. Uh, five. Actually, before that, let's go to 232. You're saying they're in violation of the constitution as it is. I mean, I mean, this, we should even be doing things to remove people from office. Let's go to 226.5. Let's go to 226.5. Uh, let's, let's go there, but as you're looking for it, if you have shared it. this clip, please go ahead and share this. Let's go to 226.5. As, as, as many people can watch it. Go, let's let's go, go to 226.5. Yeah. Even as we talk about corruption, you know, we talk about corruption in an abstract fashion. Mm. Like what was in my office, Adi. Mm. These are no corruption. In fact, even when I was coming here, it says somewhere that these are no yeah, corruption zone. Yeah. Let's go to 226.5. Constitution, not me. Nyote mm. mskize. <laughs> if the holder of a public office, including a political office, directs or approves the use of public funds contrary to law or instructions the person is liable for any loss arising from that use and shall make good the loss shall make good the loss mm -hmm. whether the person remains the holder of the office or not mm -hmm. here it is yep just imagine mm. the kind of theft we have seen under Kemsa, under all manner of, even now as you speak, we are seeing all manner of allegations by PS Environment, PS Who, yeah. they're, they're writing vouchers and travel vouchers and whatnot, mm. and looting, and looting. And you're saying they're, they're not the held liable. The Constitution holds you liable. Now, this Constitution does not have an end date. You see, this 2010 yeah. doesn't say 2010 to 2020. Mm. So you can actually be liable for looting of public resources, mm. even if it is my grandchild who will pursue you. So what is the question that, uh, that, you th uh, that I'm thinking of? The question I'm thinking of is the willingness. Is there a willingness to follow the constitution? Is there a willingness to change the tough economic times in this country? Is there a willingness to unite the country, even before we talk about bomber stocks, which is supposed to, you know, so, find a solution. So the first, the first thing that has happened, Kabiro, is the political class have realized long ago that the constitution of Kenya is a blueprint that can actually usher this country into prosperity. Mm -hmm. That's why it was popular. That's why President Kibaki, oh, by the way, my own constitution here, you can see, mm has been grant, gifted and signed to me by the former Chief Justice. Mm. So it was not uh, a decoration. It mm. was something, I have several copies, yeah. that you have to read and internalize. So they understand that a lot of Kenyans are busy trying to eke out a living. They don't read the Constitution. Mm. They have a sense of what needs to happen. Um, but 
the political class therefore have realized for us to survive, we must block this constitution. This constitution had clauses um, and, um, you know, the, 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 what, what we call the chapter four, you know, long-term solutions under the Krigler report, you know, for how to sort out issues of land, issues of inclusivity, ethnicity, etc. Mm -hmm. And there are subsequent legislation, pieces of legislation that were supposed to be enacted mm -hmm. after the promulgation of this constitution. So, 13 years after, those discussions and and, and and legislation pieces have not happened. Because the political class realizes that, you know, if we start implementing this constitution, you know, they're very reluctant. They actually hate it. Mm. That's why you had the term watermelon. Mm. Because they actually hate this constitution. They actually can't stand it. Because remember Article 1, all power belongs to the people of Kenya. Yeah. It's then delegated to elected officers or can be exercised directly. Mm. So they hate the constitution. So you think we, we you we, see they weaponize it. We, they, 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 they demonize it. Now that we are in the constitution, there are these bomber stocks, introduction of the office of the official leader of the opposition, uh, introduction of the office of the prime cabinet secretary. Now, do, do, do these talks make sense for you? Because Martha Karua says, look, the constitution is okay as it is. Let's just implement what is in the constitution. I agree with Martha. Martha is my friend. She has her own issues, but you know how. The bomber stocks are a necessary evil in the sense that they are a practical way of getting some calmness. But you know, calmness is not a lasting peace. We had a contested election once again. Mm. William Ruth is a younger guy than Raila Odinga. Mm. Um, he's smart, he's strategic. So, Did you, by the way, believe in his legitimacy as the president? To be honest, uh, not really. I mean, because... It's, it's difficult to defeat Raila, by the way, mathematically. It's difficult to... Raila has his own issues, but arithmetically, it's very difficult to do defeat Raila Odinga. That's just a fact. But Raila has his own other issues. I, th I think he won in 2007. Yeah, th th that is something most people... And that's think. many, many, many years ago. But I'm talking about 2022. Oh, come on. If he won 2007, what is 2022? What is 2017? Uh, Therefore, um, you know... To do bomber stocks is to buy time. You see, Rela always gets played. It's to buy time, mm. you know, to to get things to cool down, mm. um, and to continue to just enjoy the trappings of power, and to mislead because Rela has a huge following. I mean, you saw what happened uh, even during uh, the demonstrations, even in Nairobi alone, mm. or in whichever other counties. So again, it's a sad situation. But it's a situation which, if Raila was more selfless mm. and more strategic, would not be in this situation. Because it's, it's obvious that the state has an axe to grind with him. Mm. You cannot lose that many times, or rather win that many times, mm. and uh, not take power. So obviously, he just needed to alter his game. I think that's what he's considering for 27. Do you think he's a person for the people? If you're saying he has won and, you know... He's still working with government, uh, all these governments. Is he for the people? Is he selfless? No, he's not. And that's why I said if Raila was selfless, he would not be in this situation. Because what happens, for instance, now when he won in 2017, and he was rigged as usual, then what did he do? Rather than maintain his frame, as Americ says, mm. he went now to work for the person he defeated. To his own uh, disadvantage. Because the advantage of the handshake... Mm was not really to Rella, it was to the president. Yeah. For there to be no opposition, for him to loot in peace, mm. for him to have peace of mind. I mean, so it was, that was, that was the single most biggest blunder that Rella made of his political career. Well, to enter into a handshake with a failed president. Mm. That was a blunder of note. And Rella himself, again, your researchers will look at the video. You know, he explained, and he has intelligence. He is a leader in this country, so he gets intelligence better than what I get. Mm. And he explained, you know, Jubilee are overstealing, mm. they are looting, catastrophically looting, mm. they are overkilling, 
you know, this is, I'm just using his own words against him. Mm. So it's a very unfortunate thing. It was very bad for democracy. For, for, for other analysts. It was very bad for democracy as well. Other analysts argue he looked at the greater good. If there's no handshake between him and the president, President then who would know what would have happened to the country because the tension was so high. No, no, no. They were swearing him in as the No, president. we already had a bigger crisis in 2007, 10 years before. So um, he, the, 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 the handshake was for his own good. It was the only ticket he felt mm. that could usher him close to power and then ultimately get power. I knew, and that's how I opposed it, mm. you know, because I'm a very savvy political scientist and strategist. <laughs> yeah. I knew for a fact uh. that the handshake and all of these things, just based on background information and my observation, mm. I knew for a fact that Raila would not win. Mm. Or rather that he would not be the next president. So you went ahead, trusted President William Ruto now, then. President, now William Ruto who was deputy, trusted that he was going to be yes. the president of this country. Yes, that he's going to win. And, and, and because I'm loud, I took bets. Mm. <laughs> yes, of course, I sat with all manner of operatives. Uh, you know, in Matiangi's office, mm. at State House, at wherever. And I assured them mm. that Raila would not get it. Including even your boss. Yeah. And people couldn't understand. I mean, who the heck are you, young man, to say something like that? But I knew for a fact. You know, these things, political science is, is tough. But if you're very keen, mm. if you have a keen eye, hey, my friend, there was, even on the day, and I, I, like, I like Twitter because it unites the entire world. Yeah. Even Trump was on Twitter. Mm. Yes. And every... And now people call it X. But yeah, X yeah. is nothing. It is Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? Yeah. X is nothing. It is Twitter. Twitter. Uh. You know, on the last day after this dispute and whatnot in the courts, actually before the courts, after all the stuff at Bombers, the same Bombers, I put out a tweet. And I put out tweets which are read by mm. hundreds of thousands of people. Mm. And I asked, guys, the way the DP is moving, because we didn't know what's coming. I asked guys, the way the DP is moving, mm. because he was a candidate, Raila was a candidate. Mm. I asked them, is the DP moving like someone who is losing? Mm. Then you know the usual Kenyan tactic. Benji, where Kwenda Uko? Mm. You people, you are UDA people. You are supporting despots. I said, I'm asking, why can't you answer me mm. and say, because I saw even the convoy, the convoy left. And I just looked and I said, <laughs> Ruto who has spent so much money and time going corner to corner in this country. I remember one Sunday I woke up mm. around 8 o'clock. It's a Sunday. You rest. And the DP's helicopter was leaving Kwale for mm. Muranga. He had already done the first service. Mm. I think he had slept in Kwale, done the first service at 7 and now he was going to Muranga at 8 a.m. Mm. And Sudi spoke about it. He was speaking, speaking against Mudavadi saying, you know, a lot of us men, you know, we like having a drink. Yeah. We like having women, friends, etc. Sometimes by the time you wake up at 10 in the morning on a Sunday, unangalia TV, unaona uyu ni ruto, anaenda kanisa ya tatu. Uh. And you just, you, you can't help but feel confused, mm. angry, jealous. How are you going to stop this man? And so many things which were said by the young, smart people in this country who are all on Twitter. Mm. One guy said, William Ruto is a bomb that was assembled by the Moy family, mm. polished by the Odinga family, mm. deployed by the Kenyatta family. Mm. How are you going to stop this bomb? And you know, it sounds like a joke, but when you think about it, I could see these guys are stoppable. They went to bombers. The next thing, he was named within minutes. Then Raila started running around with lorries going mm. to court. Those things don't work, my friend. So now we... we Those things don't work. Mm. So what I, what, what I could have done and what I have done, me, I have no animosity against any person. But because I supported William Ruto, what I expected is for us to prioritize the little person. All that he said, nothing else. But, but we, Me, I don't expect anything but, else. But we know, I think yesterday was saying, look, this bottom up, it seems it's the cost of living that's coming. That is going from the bottom, bottom going to, up. To, to up. Mama Mboga. Oh, again, Mbika. all I expected is Mama Mboga, mutu wa kuchoma mahindi. Situlezema tuwanze na hii mutu ya boda boda. Na tuwane tukipanga hii mutu ya boda boda. Kwa nishire takuwa wabi? And now? Just that. Me, that is, me, that is all. In fact, if Ruto fixes the country and doesn't give me a job, that's fine with me too. 
Mm. It's not about me saying something for him to appoint me. He can appoint me or not appoint me. Mm. But if fuel is good for you, for her, for him, if we're in a better country, more secure, mm. healthcare is working, you know, the job markets are opening, mm. the, it's an enabling environment for businesses. But if he just continues adding levy, housing levy, mm. I don't know, add nini uh, five percent extra on gross for people earning a lot, add NHIF, add NSSF, add rent on a government property, add this, add that, add levies, mm. add fuel, add paraffin, add kerosene, add medicine, add electricity, add, add, add. How can I support that? Now we're in a state of calm, as you said, because of the bomber stocks. Do you see the opposition working? Calm and hunger. People Ooh. are hungry and mm. angry. Is the opposition good enough for you? Because now we are in talks. Rayla said we need results, I think, 30 days after the talks began. And it seems like nothing has changed. Rayla, as I said, when we started, he was silent. We saw him yesterday. What is the place of opposition in this current regime? How can you, first of all, move to amend a constitution that you have not even implemented? So the discussion about amending and putting this and that position would have been a fine position mm. if we had evidently been implementing the constitution. Would you trust the constitution? You know? This is just a show, so I, I, let me just be decent. Yeah. We are infiltrated, you know? so you don't have to be decent. <laughs> no, let me, let me just be decent. I mean, you are a president. Mm. Sometimes you are coming, you are drunk. You know? You are talking to people like they are, they are all your workers or your villagers. You know, like you are running the country like a, like a Coca-Cola kiosk. You know? So, obviously, something like the constitution... You know, it's just something that, uh, you know, to you it's just an opinion. So where do we start in implementing yeah. the constitution? You remember him uh, abusing judges, Wakora judges, mm. Kondeni, you know, all that. I mean, the judiciary is corrupt. I'm, I'm a victim and I'm, I'm, I'm well aware of the corruption in the judiciary. But, I mean, we have to have a semblance of order and even within constitutional dictates. Mm. When you're doing public service, a minister stands and says, you know, tutaongeza mafuta, kama utaki, endo chimbe mafuta kwenyu. I mean, are you kidding me? So... You should not be thinking of amending the constitution, mm -hmm. especially in light, in the context of um, tribal politics. Mm. Actually, let's put this position, which now, if we put someone there, mm. he will be representing, you know, this and this tribe, which feel they're in the opposition. Whereas this and this tribe, as Pagashagwa, feel they're in the government. Mm. I mean, that kind of talk is 19th century retrogressive, retroactive talk that mm. can never deliver this country to anything. Mm. We fought so hard for democracy in this country, for for free media, you know, for 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 for, for the progressive agenda, mm. for human rights, you know, habeas corpus rights, human rights, freedom from torture, from detention. You just saw last evening, I think on Itumbi's handle, but it's reported all over, mm. the team at DCI that were kidnapping and murdering i mean what are we even talking about which kind of country mm. are we going to be if you're just going to kidnap someone because they're opposed to your politics and strangle them and they're a young person and then you make it as you remember the whole revayala mm. and these are the things that were happening now do you know just based on that alone even the Uru government could have been removed so again, it's a violation of the constitution that really concerns me. Mm. Of course, the deepening poverty, mm. the lack of opportunity. I mean, just the millions of jobless youth. Then are, you, are you seeing the goodwill from the administration in implementing the constitution? No, no, I'm not. And I cannot come here and sit here and lie to you. But I would like to. And I know a lot of these guys personally. These are my personal friends, people I've grown up with. Mm. P.S. Jonathan Mweke, who has been an attempted member of parliament before, who has been attempted to become a governor, who is now a PS. You know, Moses Kuria and I, you know, would sit like this during, um, you know, analysis uh, at KTN and elsewhere. Now he's a, he's a, he's a minister. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and it, it would make me happy to see, to see, to see him as, um, you know, a very performing minister, as, 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 as a minister who can transform an agenda mm. uh, for, for, for the good. Uh, young people like Ababu Namwamba. Mm. But if we are going to be, you know, focused on, I don't know, you know, one is dating someone who is famous for twerking. I mean, I, I just don't feel like these kinds of discussions are ever going to better this country. And we cannot continue.
Kabiro, mm. to live in a country where the only hope for the youth is to is to is to aspire to leave this country. Mm. That's why we have a passport crisis. Yeah. Why do you think we have a passport crisis? Everyone's it's because everyone's trying to get a passport. Where are they getting a passport to go to? Uganda? No. Because Uganda they'll just cross the border. Mm. Everyone's getting a passport to try to get to Germany. Mm. And you have racism issues in some of these countries, by the way. Yeah. Okay? Uh, they're trying to go to the States where I lived for many years, mm. especially the States. And this is true also of professionals. Because are we paying our doctors? No. Mm. What are the working conditions for teachers? Horrible. You have a class of 60 students. You don't even know their names. Mm. You know, but is, are people in the government talking about that? No. People in the government are just focused on fighting people like me. On them calling me, on sponsoring funny things. No, no, so to talks of you being removed from a WhatsApp group. What yeah. is that all about? I mean, and it's not like I did anything wrong on the WhatsApp group. It's a, it's a WhatsApp group where we had organized media voices mm. that can explain to Kenyans um, positively what is really happening in an attempt to defend the president. Mm. So for me in the group, I just kept raising issues like, guys, I mean, how do you even explain this? <laughs> I mean, uh? to, to me, that is, some, you know, if I was a leader, if I was like at the university, if I was a chancellor mm. or the deputy chancellor in a university or CEO of a company or president of a company, you know, if someone like you can come and tell me mm. that Benji, you know, how are we going to explain this? You mm. know, I will not think you're my enemy. I would not think you're a bad person. Mm. I would be happy that you have the courage. And this is what someone like Uhuru needed. Mm. By the way, I was really ready to help Uhuru because I really felt bad. You know, Uhuru, Uhuru and I went to the same high school. And it's a very famous high school. Mm. And I really felt bad on, you know, Uhuru's tenure caused even our school to be defamed. Mm. You know, in a lot of these intellectual debates, yeah, people say, oh, you know, Saints, Saints guys, Saints yeah, Saints. yeah, imagine. You know, because he's just speaking buddies mm. and incompetency all over the place, Kina Rachel or Mamo and whatnot. So I really wanted, as an advisor, if the president was really serious, like in his last time, the last three, four years, I really wanted to just put my all, like to not even have a life mm. and just make sure the president succeeds. But you see, an advisor cannot want it more than the boss. So me, if he told me, Benji, you know what? I need you. Can you, if you, can you come and, you know, many people that I talk to, including one who is a minister, who is a neighbor of mine. Mm. They said, oh, Benji, you know, I was wondering, why don't you go and, I heard you saying this, why don't you go and tell Ruto? Hey, no, Asta, no, madam. Can I go to state house with a gun? How, how, how do you go and force Ruto to listen? So, for instance, on the economic <coughs> agenda, mm. I feel that they've failed flat. Everything. Ah, completely. Nothing, you're not seeing anything. I don't say this is useless. They've failed flat. Useless. Bure kabisa. Because even the person cutting this grass, if you ask them, they tell you the government is, and these, most of the guys I talk to, we gravitate to one another because we support a UDA. They're like, we didn't support for this. What is this? So, I believe that what the president needs to do mm. is to take a different path. Completely different path. Mm. First of all, as a leader, never be vindictive. Everything that happened has already happened. passed. Mm. And now you're the president. You don't need to think of the guys who name called you or did what or blocked. You don't need to think of those people. Mm. You are the president. Raila is not. So don't fuck. I don't know who told Ruto that every day you have to be seen going somewhere. No. Mm. Pick some key items. Pick honest advisors. Put your all into it. Mm. It will work out. So first of all, maybe we, we start from a place of... One second. On the economic policy, mm. you cannot continue on this path. You cannot tax him. Where is he going to get it from? You cannot tax, you cannot milk a cow that has not eaten. You cannot milk a cow by force. Mm. You cannot milk a cow when it is, has given you 14 liters and you own 20, you whip it. You cannot whip a cow to give you 20 liters when it can only give you 14. Mm. So let us agree on some of these basic concepts, right? Yeah. So that we can move forward. What the president needs to do is put a neb. You cannot continue implementing policy when the Kenya Association of Manufacturers, when the Federation of Employers, okay, of Kenya is telling you that you have reached according to the law of diminishing returns, the peak. Mm -hmm. So that even now when you have added, the numbers for sale 
of petroleum have gone down. Mm. I mean, how, where are you getting the money to, to fuel? Mm. That even with the taxation, the collection mm. is not higher, it's actually lower. He said he will look into taxes for fuel when he was, uh, I think, in a debate. Uh, and he said he will look at these taxes, but then he goes ahead and increases VAT. Exactly. You know, so you would want. So what is that? I mean, um, so because this is what I do, allow me to just in a very simple fashion just mm -hmm. give you some quick examples which our viewers can check. So at two seventeen shillings a liter, a liter of petrol is equal to a liter four liters, three point eight liters make a gallon. Mm -hmm. So if you do the numbers, first of all, conversion of the dollar, mm -hmm. shilling to dollar, then liter to gallon. Mm -hmm. And you do the comparative analysis, okay? In my degree, I did something called cross-cultural com uh, cross cultural communication, where we would do, for instance, uh, you compare Germany, Italy, Kenya. Mm. You know, it's, it's always a, a pity to even do that comparison because it just you realize how small we are. Mm. Um, if, you, if, if you do that analysis mm. against incomes, you realize we are paying for fuel about the same as what America is paying, mm. but their average incomes and why everyone is trying to go there are 20 times more. Mm. 20, two, zero, not 10. Mm. 20. Because remember, by law, America, a lot of the um, minimum wage, mm. which is a big topic in presidential debates, yeah. is at $15 an hour. Just mm. do the math, an hour. Yeah. So the, the income, the 8,000 per day mm. shillings, that someone earns, or 12,000 shillings per day, yeah. is what a lot of our average people are earning here a month. Yeah. If you talk about domestic workers, True. if you talk about gardeners, if you talk about even a driver. Mm. You know, so for instance, just give you another example, because I'm working on a case like this for a friend who's trying to emigrate. Mm. A truck driver earns, you know, in the US, in the UK, almost 800,000 Kenya shillings a month. Mm. What about here? 30, 35,000. So how then are you able to purchase if you don't have purchasing power? So you have to start from the realization of there's no parity, mm. number one. Then number two, you have to build an environment as government mm. that is enabling. You have to take, for instance, you say, Kabiru runs, runs a small thing, a small outfit that is a media broadcast house. What I'm going to do for him mm. is I'm going to give him tax breaks. We need the money. Yeah. But we need more Kabirus to grow this economy. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to give you tax breaks. What I'll do is you won't pay taxes. And when you start paying, because we collect your money in unison as government, we will then every year give you a tax return. Mm -hmm. All the money we'll pay it back to you. Okay. So you can look forward to April and you get, boom, 800,000 shillings. Oh. A check from the National Treasury. All right? But what I'll require from you, Kabiru, is you also need to show me that you're employing at least three Kenyans. Mm. Those are the discussions you need to be having. Have you had need to having those discussions? You need to sh so that way you create jobs. Yeah. You create uh, uh, an economy. Therefore, all right. You bring people to because people want to pay taxes. Mm. You bring legitimacy. I mean, why would you want to run your media house underground mm. if I've given you an enabling environment? But what they have now is you open a restaurant, the county government is there, they arrest you. Mm. They ask you to buy 10 licenses. All right? KRA come, they bring you a letter. They bring you another letter. Now, why would you do that? Why would you treat someone like a criminal if they're an investor? Is that the way to treat an investor? So this is stupid. This is foolish. And this is for short-term gain for a few people in government to wait for that money and collect that money and build flats for themselves. It's cheap, it's hollow, it's ridiculous, and it's not why William Ruto ran for office. If he changes course, I will support him. Mm. If he doesn't, I will tell him boldly he's failed, and history will tell him he failed, and he failed just like his predecessor, Uhuru. The person that didn't fail is Mwai Kibaki, and may God rest his soul in eternal peace. I want to wrap up this conversation, but I, I promise people will also talk a little bit about succession politics for, you know, what is happening between Raila and Kalonzo and those yeah. Kalonzo sort of on, on Sunday comes out on Monday through a presser from Denis Onyango. They're saying that was not an endorsement. It was just praising him because he's done a good job. It was an endorsement. It was an endorsement from, from where you sit. It was an endorsement. Uh, the former vice president was my boss for many years. He's a friend of mine. I've known him for many years. I know his weaknesses. I know his strengths. I know his good side. I know his bad side. 
Um, what Kalonzo and Royla need to do is they need to be very strategic. Um, we have a problem of culture in this country. Um, our, our leaders are a reflection of us. Uh, Kalonzo needs to be big. Mm. He needs to be big of heart, big of mind, you know. This is what it takes to be a leader. He needs to be able to be aggressive, to go out there, um, and, 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 and to be able to not wait really for anything. Mm. The endorsement would be good, and it, it really was an endorsement, and I believe that Raila can endorse him. Mm. I think they had a lot of baggage, which now it seems that they've really gotten over the baggage. You remember Raila calling him Ju Judas yeah. Iscariot in 2007 because it was after the fallout and uh, the result of a rigged election that Raila, uh, that uh, Kalo Moshimo Kalonzo, His Excellency Kalonzo, became a vice president. Mm. So we have a lot of dirty and tough baggage in this country. Mm. But I want to encourage the leaders because they also watch this actually more than anyone. Yes. Um, I called Kalonzo the other day, he picked and then he hung up, said he'd call, he didn't call. Mm. We, 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 we must not continue down the path of, you know, the Uhuru type of petty politics, mm. you know, the vindictiveness, the sensitivity, mm. you criticized me, you are with my enemy, mm. you're, you know, the suspicion. We need leaders that are very bold that have an agenda for this country. Mm. Because otherwise, what happens is, you don't get into a rooter situation where you really wanted to be president, you become president, and then so what? So, I, this is just an appeal to them to think bigger, mm. to get over their egos, mm. to put the transformation agenda of this country ahead, or even to move out the way. You know, this country also, I mean, Kalonzo has been around some 38 years. He first got elected in 1985 in a by-election. Mm. Um, his track record is questionable. That's a fact of life. Questionable? Yes, his track record. Mm. on His development track record, mm. record leaves a lot to be desired. Mm. The same could be said of Moshimu Arela Odinga. Mm. That's, a, that's just a fact, man, if we're going to be serious about poverty alleviation in this country. But if we're fine with mediocrity, Oh, we can continue all these nasty politics as, as long as we like. Mm. The politics of name calling mm. and whatnot and lies all over the place and mobilizing tribes. The kind of thing you saw with Uhuru, the kind of thing you see with Kashagwa, mm. the kind of thing you see some with, you know. Actually, Ruto on strategy is the first guy who said, you see, I'm not going to continue the discussion around putting tribes together. Mm. I'm going to mobilize um, what they called a class war though not a class war, but a class kind of discussion mm. on the rich and the poor. And the poor are the many, and I'm going to mobilize them and try and do something for them. Unfortunately, he used it as a gimmick. I'd like to see it as an implementable strategy, mm. such as my former president, Bill Clinton, did mm. when we were young those days. They really did a lot of policy under Federal Housing Administration, mm. under different things to increase home ownership, to increase Section 125 workman compensation and mm. payment plans, and what have you, in a very real fashion, so that the American economy, it didn't just happen to be. Mm. It was a deliberate policy effort to build, create jobs, mm. to create actually what they call high-paying jobs. And we cannot continue admiring countries in the West, Kabiru. We also must uh, co cause Uganda and Nigeria, etc., to admire us as Kenya because we are doing great things. But right now, no great things are happening. Mm. Right now, it is all about, you know, all these f guys, by the way, the front running guys in Nini were all Kanu, mm. Kanu people. Uruto was a Kanu man. Gashago was a Kanu Dio. Mm. Uh, Kalonzo is a Kanu guy. Uh, Raila is a former Secretary General of Kanu. So Kanuism, Kanu which destroyed this country, mm. has still continued to fester in different shapes and forms. Well, what is the future? And that's unfortunate. We're winding up. What is the future of this Kenya Kwanzaa administration? If they continue with this trajectory, how long will they last? Will they even win in 2027? Because everyone now is talking about 2027. And we just I hate to say this on national television. But I think now people just bank on the ability to rig. If it wasn't the ability to tinker with these technology things, the so-called server, etc., I honestly don't think Kenya Kwanzaa, if they continue like this, they don't have a chance. Mm. But in an environment where rigging is a reality, then I think nowadays what people do is you just do your gimmicks at the, in the last year, mm. confuse people, run around, tell a lot of lies, pray a lot, uh. which is also wrong. People will still believe. And then people believe some funny things, then you... You, you, you pull crowds and 
create the perception that you have a huge following mm. and then you rig. And so once again, I only might use this platform mm. to call for reform. All right. Because we have these different channels. Everyone now has a smartphone. So all young people do is watch TikTok, mm -hmm. watch these shows. In fact, you put the clips on TikTok, TikTok. so they'll see them. Mm -hmm. What I can urge is, you've seen what has happened, for, insta for instance, in Palestine mm -hmm. with Israel. You know, such an unfortunate thing. You know, such, such a man-made catastrophe. Mm -hmm. Actually, that is it. So human interaction and human action and policy action can bring all these devastating consequences. Mm. It is our deliberate effort to put the right people in office, mm. to put the right policies in place that can make this country mm. a secure country, a food secure country, that can secure the future for our young people, that can use our tax shillings for the betterment, mm. for better roads, for better services, for dependable power, for, uh, for, for quality healthcare, I mean, like I talked about earlier, mm -hmm. just painkillers in hospitals. You know how many mothers are dying giving birth? Mm -hmm. or, 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 or issues with blood transfusion. Mara, you have the blood bank. Drug bank has been diverted to Sudan or wherever. Mm -hmm. We just have to get out of this kind of rotten mentality mm -hmm. for the sake of this country. That's my only message. My message is, my, my purpose to come here is not to bash William Ruto, is mm -hmm. not to bash Raila Odinga. We respect all our leaders. But it is on them to do the right thing. It is not on them to be vindictive, mm. to be cheap, to be petty, mm. you know, to be exchanging SMSs at the owner Ville Benji and Onga. Mm. You know, it's not about that. It's all eh? about we need to change. Yes, to you, you interrogate and ask why is Benji saying this? Because after all, I am a voice in this country. I know, I've been around here doing this for over 10 years. I know comments will be if Benji is given a state job right now, he will not speak the way he's speaking. Okay, so I've, I got a lot of that on a daily basis. Um, here's the thing. If I'm given a state job today, um, you can see how I look now. Yeah. So there's no state job that has been feeding me per se. Um, it is not mandatory that I be in a state job. Mm. And it is not that, that, that if I lose a state job, uh, like the world ends. Mm. What I can guarantee is that even if I work for the president, Kenyans and the president can count on me to respectfully tell the president the truth and to respectfully speak truth to the constitution Mm. to the Kenyan people, and to God Almighty. I think that we must not become confused and try to redefine values and, and, and ideals. That if I speak truth, like Omtata does, that I am a bad person. Mm. No, if I got a state job, I will speak the same things I'm speaking, honestly, Candidly, but respectfully. In, let me say this a different way. It is not my job as CS, as government spokesman, as, as anything to go and tell lies to the president. I cannot tell the president that things are good when they are bad. Mm. I'll give you an instance. Is he surrounded with those people? people yes, that are of course. Them? If you are surrounded by people who believe in a CAS position, a position that is clearly not constitutional, a position that is clearly a wrong position. And you've got people running around calling themselves CAS and earning salary illegally. That, that is a violation of the constitution. And so, for me, even if I'm appointed, I cannot... Just to give you an, an, uh, a quick example. A, another example, uh, a final one. As we're winding up. I didn't apply for the CAS position. Mm. And I was actually asked to apply. But I don't believe in it. I don't believe in it. Mm. And I talk to all these people. And the, you know, Kenya is a small country. We are all, we all worked at Standard Group at the same time and at NTV and at where we've done campaign. All these people, we all know each other, by the way. Mm. All leaders, we all have each other's. I have Ruto's phone number. Mm. I even sent him a message the other day. Mm. Why wouldn't I? So you're saying it's your duty to be respectfully as you tell the truth. And it's his duty to not victimize me. It's his duty to not feel bile against me. Mm. We... Even if I get elected a governor, which one day I might, mm. or whatever, it is not my job to look for psychophants. It is my job to look for smart people, mm. 
who mean the best for the county and for the country, yeah. who can tell me, Governor, uh, I don't think. I talk to Sakaja a lot. He's my friend. He's been my friend since he was chairman of TNA. Mm -hmm. Since he has been in my office when I was in the vice president's office at Jogo House. So, you know, Babu Wino is a friend of mine since he made a big mistake. Uh, a, a mistake that he has really recovered well from. Mm. You know, where the injury of uh, DJ Evolve. Yeah. A, a young man with a lot of fire in the belly. Natural, God-given fire. We only have each other's numbers. That's mm. a fact. That's a fact. When we have Arambes, we call each other. We support one another. Mm. So, it's not about... It's not about sides. You know? Ah, Benji Ukiongea Ivi, ni Raila nakulipa. No, Raila has paid me. Raila has been my boss. Mm. And... Uh, he was a gracious boss. There was a lot of other issues, mm -hmm. a lot of disorganization. But I have Raila's number. Mm -hmm. He has given me gifts. I've been to his home. Mm -hmm. I've had lunch with him. So for me also, it's not that I'm criticizing him because Ruto has sent me or to catch Ruto's eye. No. Mm -hmm. Where we disagree, let us disagree. Hopefully in very um, um, decent mm -hmm. you know, terms. But we must accept also, the leaders also abuse each other. Yeah. So in fact, I also say that the person even who taught us all this insulting stuff, it was Uhuru himself who was the worst. <laughs> and he said it himself during one of the mm. things about at Bomas. He said, you know, for the mess that is in this country, yeah. I myself as Uhuru, I take a lot of responsibility. Because that Amimi ni metukanana, mm. you know, it's true. And the you, young people, mm. you know, also s see that. You know, Sonko is from my shards. Mm. He's my buddy. I have his number. We meet. He knows I'm Benji and I know he's Sonko. Mm. So let us keep our eye on the ball. Let us not uh, focus on trivialities. Mm. You know, we are all... Some of us have been very fortunate. We have... I mean, I really feel for youth in this country. You're 28 years old. You've never had your first job. You're a graduate. I meet graduates. Someone with master's says, Oh, Moshmo uh, Benji, can, I, can you give me a job? Hey, sometimes it's really tough because sometimes even I myself might not have a job at that particular time. Mm. But someone is just calling you incessantly believing that you can sort them out we can have a better country if we all can follow this thing that's mm. why i carried it and if we can all be not petty and honest and true truthful mm. to the constitution to god and to one another but now if i come and lie here then tomorrow if he gives me a job then i start saying the economy mm. the economy is doing well the economy is even the collections are down at treasury that's a fact we need to wrap it up. Say that. We need to wrap this conversation. It's Benjamin Dollar with his constitution signed by former SCJ Mutunga. Yeah. Thank you so much for making time for us. It's been an awesome conversation. Can we do this again? We'll do this absolutely so many times. Until You're a really good host. I, I, I like how you answer questions because mm. you feel the guests feel very comfortable. Mm. I hope I wasn't too rough. Um, mm. I mean well for this country. I want the best for this country. And I'm not willing to be bought by anybody. Sawa, sawa. He can't be bought. Benji, I always know. Until we do talk again, have yourself Thank a you. lovely rest of your night.